this is probably the cheapest 85 millimeter lens that you can buy for the Sony E-mount system. And uh, 399 bucks, I gotta say, it is uh, pretty darn good. We haven't done a lens review here in a long time, so this is gonna be really fun. So I just wanna start out by saying thank you so much to everyone that is here supporting the channel, enjoying the content and uh, having a good time. And uh, so uh, if you're watching me for the first time, you might wanna consider hitting that subscribe button because that would be appreciated. I'm just gonna add a disclaimer and say that Viltrox did send this out to me and asked if I could do a review on it. And uh, I said, yeah, why not? Because I think that there's a lot of you that might be interested in this lens because of the good price that it has. So, when it comes to the build quality of this lens, I do think it feels really solid. And uh, the casing here is made out of metal, so it has this like premium, premium feeling to it. When it comes to the design, I think it looks good. And this red little uh, thing that they added here might just be added in to make people think that it's a G Master lens, but it looks good. Like having something red on black is always a winner. You also don't have any kind of switches or buttons or anything like that and the only thing that you got is the focus ring which I think feels pretty good. Like it doesn't have too much resistance but it's not too smooth either. It's not really on par with the 24mm GM lens that I really liked. And you can check out that review right here. But comparing it to the Badis 85 and the Samyang 85, I do think that this feels much better. And I do like the rugged metal more than the rubber that is on the Badis lenses. When it comes to the weight of lens, it is coming in at 630 grams. And that is... 630... Let's pound. 1.8... 39 pounds and when you compare it to the other 85 millimeter lens millimeter lenses such as the baddest and the budget sony version i do think that this is a little bit heavier but not too heavy something that i personally like to have on all my lenses is a weather ceiling here in the back and unfortunately this lens does not have that but you can't expect too much from a lens that costs like 400 bucks but since you have like I, i'm guessing that this is the updating micro usb here in the back as well that means that this contact might be like exposed for different kind of things that you don't really want the contact to be exposed for. But I didn't really expect this lens to have a weather ceiling, but it would be really good if it had one. The autofocus of the lens does work good and it works with IAF as well, but I have experienced some like really unreliable things with the lens. Like when I tried it out, it was just hunting back and forth between the focus point. It didn't really like snap on. And secondly, it just didn't start my camera. It just like was black and I couldn't use the camera at all. And I did try it on the ASM3 and the ASM R3 and I got the same issue no matter what camera I was using, just totally random. So I couldn't get it on film, but it's there. So I don't know why that happened, but maybe it's because of a firmware update or something like that. I would not bring this to a shoot just because it's too unreliable for me when I wanna be as efficient as possible and make sure that I get the results that I wanna have. The fascinating thing about this lens though is that I had some really like low expectations on the image quality of the lens because of the price, but it is actually really sharp. I did not suspect that at all, but it produces some really good images. And when I compared this to the Badis 85, I do think that this lens was doing a pretty good job of like holding up towards the Badis when I changed the aperture. So really impressed. I did use this lens when I was shooting the opening shot of the cinematic blacksmith video that I have right here, if you want to check that out. And I do think that it produced a really good looking shot. Like it looked so good. I mean, like when you're shooting 85 millimeter at 1.8, it's going to give you that. It's a, it's a special feeling to it. Like it's, it looks like the blacksmith is popping out from the background and I really like the look that it gave. I did not use the autofocus when I was getting that shot because I wanted to make sure that I got the shot that I wanted to have. And the autofocus works good, but I would not rely on it when it comes to video mode because it's definitely not on par as with the native Sony lenses such as the Badis and the other Sony budget lens. The bokeh, or a bokeh, 
as we say here in Sweden, looks really great. And I actually think it looks better than the baddest lens. So that is, that is a huge thumbs up. So if you're just starting out with photography or videography and you want to buy an 85 millimeter lens to get those really good portraits or uh, B-rolls, if you may, or whatever you want to use it for, then I actually do think that this lens is a really good starting point to get your feet in and get some high quality images for a really cheap price. I really should stop throwing lenses around because these are expensive pieces of equipment. But yeah, I would love to know what you think about the lens, uh, so do drop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, do give it a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be highly appreciated. So, uh, well, until next time, Peter from Sverige, this time around, adios.